shocking story. A college student trying to play out one of the world's most popular and violent video games. And then earns extra points by killing her. We now require warning labels on toys that can potentially damage children's bodies. Why not do so on a toy that can damage their minds? Video games have been at the heart of controversy for years. They've been blamed for everything from shootings to bad grades to your parents' divorce. It's not uncommon for video games to be painted as the devil, but never before did it reach levels like it did in 2005 with GTA San Andreas and the Hot Coffee mod. I am the captain of this vessel, I'm Charles, and today I will be taking you deep into the depths of a controversy so legendary that it is still talked about to this day and was nearly responsible for the eradication of video games as a whole. We nearly lost this sacred treasure. Join me today as we spread apart these ass cheeks and dive deep into the Hot Coffee mod history. So what is Deep Dive? Deep Dive is a new series in which we've gathered America's brightest minds and put them aboard this vessel to tackle the most puzzling mysteries we've ever faced. We attempt to solve the Black Dahlia murder, what happened at the Diathlov Pass, as well as just go over the wackiest controversies we've ever seen, as well as their cultural impact on our society. So hot coffee was the natural first step on this journey we'd like to take. So what was the hot coffee mod? The Hot Coffee mod was a hidden minigame found within GTA San Andreas. This minigame involved sex, an unexplored taboo topic in the 2005 era. By today's standards, this doesn't look that impressive. It's two fully clothed models with maybe like 20 polygons total making them up. It looks like a bad Roblox mod doing WWE wrestling moves in the bedroom. But in 2005, this was proof that gamers were spitting in the face of God. This was fucking blasphemous back then. This wasn't the first of its kind. God of War 2 also did something similar, however, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. With GTA's hot coffee mod and this simulated sex scene... Damn. That guy's fucking cruising though. Just the fact that it was in 2005 that this had a pretty profound effect, and a lot of fear was driven into the hearts of parents that didn't really monitor their children's behavior. So there's a huge hoobla about it, which is odd because in 2005, we were just beginning to explore the possibilities with online pornography. It was very hypersexualized at the time. Men in 2005 saw more titties than any of their ancestors previously, thanks to the ease of access to such content, but it had never really leaked into video games where most parents would just give their kids a game and just ignore them. Now they felt like they had some level of responsibility, God forbid, to actually monitor and see what their children were consuming. And the hot coffee mod put a lot of fear in their hearts. In 2005, the 38-year-old modder Patrick W. from the Netherlands shared with the world the hot coffee mod. It was unlike anything we'd ever seen before. This was like a unicorn. It was absolutely fucking magical. And that's because it wasn't really a mod. It was in the game, what Patrick did was he changed a 0 to a 1, which re-enabled its existence in the code. So he basically just flipped the light switch and turned it on, and then you got to have horribly animated, penetrative sex with whoever you were going on that date with. After news of this discovery broke to the world, it was more impactful than if we had found Atlantis. Everyone picked up on the story with an absolute mass panic. Parents losing their fucking minds, thinking that there were hidden things like this in all of the video games their children were consuming. This was sex hidden in my mature rated game that my son was playing. My god, what else is in there? And this led to huge panic and Rockstar themselves had to come out and do the best they could to stop the storm of shitty parenting. Rockstar initially tried lying. They said that this didn't exist in the game and they were disgusted that this modder, this hacker who could probably steal all their bank account information if he wanted to, would do something so horrendous and so just disgusting to put sex in their video game. They came out and condemned it and pretended like they didn't know what it was. They said that it was all Patrick W who put this here, it was his creation, his baby, Rockstar had nothing to do with it, they were victims of this heinous crime. But then after the ESRB got involved, they then had to kind of backpedal in order to avoid further huge problems and legal ramifications. They had to come out and admit that no, 
This is a feature that existed in the game that they thought was turned off for good. This led to ESRB pressuring them and eventually led to them re-rating the game as an adult-only game. It was discovered that the same effect could be achieved in the original console ports of the game using simple third-party software. So some shit like Game Genie, Game Shark, Turbo Gamer Extreme, fucking Game Facts cheat codes. It wasn't hard to access, even on the console. It wasn't limited to just Patrick's supercomputer of hacking and his galaxy brain. ESRB, of course, had to reevaluate their rating on the game after this discovery and deemed that this would be an adults-only game, which meant that GameStop had to remove the game from their shelves along with every other retailer that refused to carry adult-only games, which ended up costing Rockstar and the parent company Take-Two over $150 million in profit in the recall of the product from the shelves. So, this happened over 15 years ago. Why are we talking about it now? Well, A, it's a fucking great story, and B, I'll get into that right after we talk about World of Tanks. And to do that, I'm calling in the expert, First Mate Phillips, to take it away. Thanks, Captain Charles White. World of Tanks is a massive online, free-to-play PC game where you get to sit in the driver's seat of some awesome tanks. World of Tanks has a massive arsenal of over 550 tanks, so you and your friends can play in run-and-gun styles, ambush styles through the forest. You can sit back and snipe from afar. The world is your oyster. There's also some massive fields that you can play in, so you can choose from 40 different arenas, whether you want to sneak through the forests, tear through the deserts, go through the warehouses, it's whatever you guys want to do. And like I mentioned, World of Tanks is free to play with 100 million active users. So you can jump in with any of your friends, whether you're a novice or pro, and experience the same amazing game as everybody else. One of the coolest parts is that it's historically accurate. You get to feel like a real tank commander taking part in a furious armored offense. You get to earn experience, modify, and even upgrade your tank so you can create a steel beast that's ready for any competition. So remember to use invite code TANKMANIA to get the tier 5 Excelsior tank, 250,000 credits, 7 days premium access, and 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each. So once again, use code TANKMANIA for an awesome package today. Sending it back to you, Captain Charles. So before we can really get into the effect this had on gaming as a whole, it's important again that we analyze the time period. 2005 was very different than the time period we exist in currently, where everything is fucking horrible. Back then, it was very different. Everything was new. The internet was just beginning to take off. People were just understanding how things worked in the wild world of the cyberspace. Memes didn't even really exist back then. There's like a single fucking meme with like a baby dancing. It was a very different time period, so people reacted differently to something as simple as fully clothed sex. Like, the sex depicted in the hot coffee mod looks like a child playing with action figures. It doesn't even go over emotional impacts involved with sex, such as the crying that ensues afterwards and all of the scarring. It's a very different and very juvenile look at sex, but back then this was enough to set most parents off especially because they feared what other things were hidden in their video games. And in particular, the group that was most offended by this was the religious groups. Up until this point, they didn't set their sights too hard on video games as this vessel of evil. They weren't fans of video games, but up until this point, they were relatively quiet in their distaste for them. But once it broke that there was this unholy act of premarital sex, they decided to sharpen their pitchforks and really go after it as did the media, so GTA San Andreas was the poster child to serve as this example of evil video games and the horrible things that go into them. And Grand Theft Auto as a series was no stranger to the limelight of controversy. GTA 3 had multiple controversies involving the prostitutes in the game, which players had the option to kill if they wanted to since it's a sandbox game, so they could hit prostitutes with their car and shit like that, which was a big deal. And that controversy carried over to their next game, Vice City. I very distinctly remember Vice City having multiple news segments about how it was corrupting the youth and turning them into maniacs and serial killers. So these weren't out of nowhere. Rockstar had been down this path before, but never to this extreme where the game was actively being investigated, re-rated in this capacity. And all because of a piece of hidden content 
A goofy little mini game that was probably put in there as a joke, considering how little effort went into it. So the question needs to be asked, why was this mini game still in the code? It would have been a pretty easy solution to just delete it. It's like a simple line of code. I can't imagine that it was a huge arduous task to just remove it. Why was the solution that Rockstar came to just turning it off? Kind of. So there's a few theories here, and not to go full Alex Jones on you, but I'll choose the most sane ones. The first theory is that game development being as complicated as it is and an ever-changing process, it could have just been overlooked. It could have at one point been a core part of the game that Rockstar wanted to include, but just never got around to fully fleshing out, so they just decided to scrap it and hide it. This makes a lot of sense because games change a lot, and Rockstar was constantly pushing the boundaries. They did it every release. GTA 3, absolutely massive, completely different from the previous entries, the first foray into 3D adventure, and really one of the most influential sandbox games ever. Then they go to Vice City, where they amped it up even further and doubled down on the controversial elements. And then San Andreas, maybe they wanted to be even edgier, fucking push the boundaries even harder. It's not a phase, dad, and go in hot and just have penetrative sex, which they didn't fully realize in time by the deadline. And there's actually pretty concrete evidence to suggest that this was the cause. They didn't have enough time to flesh it out, and they just needed to get the game out on time. There is an email that has been surfaced from co-founder of Rockstar, Sam Hauser. In the email he says, We locked it, referring to hot coffee, away because there was no other way to get the game done on time. Safely. I, I, that's weird phrasing. It makes it sound like the whole office was like in danger. Like there's fucking dynamite planted under the building if they didn't get it shipped in time. The code is very interwoven in and everything reacts to everything else. The impact of yanking something late is too scary. I'm not a game developer, but that seems like a pretty shitty excuse. It's not like a fully fleshed out game, but I don't know. This is the email, and it does sound believable if it's like the worst coding of all time. So it is possible that it was there, and then when they were ready to ship, they couldn't finish it, and if they took it out, it would have damaged the product as a whole, affecting other things, like maybe gravity wouldn't work if they didn't have this hidden minigame in there. In another leak, Super Sexy Sam had messaged Rockstar's operational director, Jennifer Colby, expressing his disappointment that the sex minigame was poised to be cut from the game, saying, in GTA San Andreas, we are keen to include new functionality and interaction in line with the vibe of the game. This guy's a pioneer using vibe back then, Jesus. In addition to the violence and bad language, we want to include sexual content, which I understand is questionable to certain people, but pretty natural, more than violence, when you think about it and consider the fact that the game is intended for adults. I know this is a tricky area, he concluded, but I want to find a way for this to work. You can see how bad they wanted to fuck in this game. And you can really see just how incompetent they were at capturing it with the minigame. But the heart and the passion was there. They clearly wanted this as a feature in the game. Colby responded, stating that the ESRB would most certainly give San Andreas an adult-only rating, which would hurt 80% of their distribution options at the time. So finally, Sam said, The cuts are everywhere. It didn't feel like we were pushing any boundaries now. Why bother? I really, really do not want to change this stuff. It feels so wrong at the behest of psychotic Mormon capitalist retailers. Sam's kind of going in. Sam's starting to fucking feel himself here. He wants to fuck in his games, but he feels like his hands are tied by society. We are prisoners of the societal standards that forbid us from seeing sex in GTA San Andreas at this time, and Sam laments this fact. And a month after the console launch, Sam sent another email, and this time the game's producer Leslie Binzies in regards to the PC version in which he said, explore any additional content ideas. See how hard we can push the sex stuff to make it bonkers. Fucking Godspeed, Sam. That's exactly what we needed. A man with a pure passion for pussy and penis in the bedroom of GTA San Andreas. This was a guy, a pioneer, an innovator, who wanted sex in his game so desperately and whose heart was broken when he couldn't have it. It seems like he's the only one on the people side here at the company, constantly lobbying to push the envelope and make it as bonkers as possible. And unfortunately what we got was anything but bonkers. The plan was to release two versions of GTA on PC, an M-rated version and an adults-only version with even more depravity, with the promise, yes, we will go to places you other fucks wouldn't even consider.
the Sam guy is fucking awesome. I mean, he wanted to be unique, and I think in the end he did get there, just not in the way he would have liked. I think the idea of having an M-rated version, an adults-only version, is at least interesting, albeit kind of dumb. After some inner office uneasiness with the sales team, they ultimately decided to port the PS2 version and ship the game as is, but with a proposed plan to unlock the darkness. Someone put Sam in horny jail. This poor guy, man. All he wanted was sex in his game. And what did he get? Blasted by the media? Framed as some kind of evil, perverted devil? I think Sam was done dirty here. He wanted to deliver something unique to the people, and he knew what the people wanted. He wanted those honking bonkers in his game, and he wanted you to be able to experience it in the way that he intended. But unfortunately, we didn't get there. And Sam's legacy is forever a bit tarnished, but at least these emails surfaced to show that he was the hero all along of this anime. But the most interesting part about this is the modders had known about the minigame for months leading up to the PC release, because they'd already been poking around the PS2 files and found references to the locked out content. So that means the modders were already kind of in the know, and just needing a way to access it, which they were finally able to get when it came to PC. They kept quiet about it in the hopes that Rockstar would do exactly what they did, touch nothing from the original release with the sexual content still intact. The modders played them like a fiddle. Their bet paid off, and the San Andreas first mod was released before the original modder even had a copy of the game. In response, Sheriff Sam Hauser said, They found it. This cause any problems? Hope not, as it's pretty cool. And Sam was right. It, it is pretty cool. Sam doesn't seem too bothered by it, although the outrage and what would eventually happen probably put a bit of a damper on his fun. But at least Sam finally got to share at least a part of his vision with the world through this mod. And he was obviously delighted that the world could see his creative vision jam itself back and forth into another consenting adult. But was this his plan all along? I don't think so. I, I think he would have liked to have his name put on it like this is a Sam Hauser original. I fought for this as he's pumping his fists in the air, celebrating. But Rockstar went on the offensive and tried to blame modders, and they, they put all of the onus on them. They were the wrongdoers, they were the supervillains, Rockstar was innocent. Until eventually all of these uh, emails leaked and they eventually had to be very forthcoming with the information. Because it was a big, big PR disaster. Even Rockstar admitted fault saying that blaming it on hackers was a colossal PR screw-up. It was a complete disaster. They lied. And ultimately, Take-Two settled the inevitable securities class action lawsuit paying over $20 million. The U.S. Senate got involved in another attempt to demonize video games and enact stricter regulations, and the ESRB was then forced to tighten their rules, putting Rockstar on notice. Any findings of future hidden content would result in FTC fines of $11,000 per violation, and that still exists to this day. If there is hidden content, the ESRB must be made aware of it. I don't think it's had a huge effect on games, because I don't know how many games are hiding like fully clothed sex scenes, but it is still worth noting that this is still in effect to this day. And because of these guidelines, content like Locked Out DLC is usually discovered in games like Smash Brothers due to internal ESRB leaks. It's not a huge deal, but you can imagine Nintendo isn't too happy about shit like that when their roster is getting leaked because the bad boy the gaming industry wanted sex in his video game. I'd also like to quickly add that there was a class action lawsuit in New York filed by a woman named Florence who was an 85 year old grandmother who purchased a game for her 14 year old grandson and claimed that it was guilty of deception, false advertising, fraud, and abuse. Florence said, hold my adult diaper, I see an opportunity for some big bucks and with little dollar signs in her eyes like Mr. Krabs, she fucking hopped on this train and went in on San Andreas for this hot coffee mod. If Florence is still alive into her hundreds, she's probably still smiling about this. She struck while the iron was hot, she came in and flopped her titties right on the legal table and took it to Rockstar. And then also there was a protesting, a large protest organized by a group called the Peace Holics, which sounds like a cult that would exist in the GTA universe. And I just wanted to point that out because the name Peace Holics is really intimidating. Like that's some hardcore shit right there. And Rockstar was in their crosshairs. San Andreas, best selling PS2 game of all time. Only game to go where no virtual penis has gone before, right in our faces at our own home. Not only a great game, but a game that pushed boundaries and pushed back against a society that was unwelcoming to cyber sex. Uh, vir virtual 
fake characters engaging in sex in the cyberspace. So there you have it. That's the story of Rockstar's hot coffee mod. And uh, that's about it. About to fucking sail out of here now. I'm your Captain Charles signing off. And we'll see you next time. How does this seat go down? Yeah. Oh, I'm on a ground level. <laughs>